Welcome to the Success in Africa podcast with Dr. Modupe, your weekly dose of leadership vitamins to make you successful in Africa. Hello and welcome to the Success in Africa podcast episode 37. My name is Dr. Modupe Taylor Pierce and I am a scholar and practitioner of leadership and organizational development. Simply put, I study what makes people successful. I have been studying this for three decades with a particular focus on people in Africa. And in this podcast, I will share stories, lessons, and insights about people having success in Africa. Why this podcast? Because I am sick and tired of Africa being the poorest continent in the world. We are blessed with the greatest resource, young people. Africa will soon have the largest number of working age people in the world. And when these people achieve success, watch out. Africa's wealth will be unparalleled. Why? Because I don't know of too many Africans whose goal in life it is to die poor. You see, success in life is simply the achievement of a predetermined goal. Whether that goal is owning a house and a car or creating employment for 100,000 people or transforming your country into a high-income country, this podcast has been created to help you to achieve it. So if you're serious about achieving success in Africa, I want you to subscribe to this channel. If you like this video after you've watched it, please click the like button. This podcast is brought to you courtesy of BCA Leadership, the largest leadership enhancement company in Africa. If you have questions that you want me to answer after watching this video, just log on to BCA Online, the link is on the screen, and post your questions there. That is where I will respond to your questions. Today, we are continuing with a four-part series on raising capital. You see, raising capital to fund your business venture or nonprofit organization is one of the areas that most occupies the minds of current and would-be founders. I often get this question, uh, Dr. Modupe, I need money to start my business. How do I get the money? Now, rather than give you a bunch of theories from textbooks on how to raise capital, I'm simply sharing with you the stories of four different founders and how they found the resources needed to grow their business. You may glean from the stories the lessons that most clearly resonate with you as you pursue your dream of success. Last week, we learned about the journey of David Pakima and learned about the importance of asking for what you need, putting a plan on paper, establishing competence, and starting with who you know, or who knows you, actually. Today, we're going to learn from the journey of another young founder, this time from Uganda. His name is Sam Turiatunga, and he is the founder of Tursam Investments, the maker of Uhuru Fruit juices or Uhuru fruit drinks. Now, Sam's entrepreneurial journey started out of pure necessity. I'm sure some of you watching this can resonate with this. He was a poor university student facing significant financial constraints because his father, who was 30 years older than his mother, did not have the means to support him. So, Sam decided to fend for himself, and he found his way into a juice-making company and convinced the company that he could be a successful agent for them, selling their juices in the university. They agreed, and he started selling the juices, and within one month, he had generated over $100 for himself in his own earnings. He started to ask himself, ah, why can't I make the juice myself? and sell it. And so he started. He bought his own fruits, first bananas, he started with that, and he started blending and making the juices and selling them to fellow students in disposable cups. The students loved the juices and he developed a growing customer base. However, he was unable to meet their needs because he quickly ran into the problem of capital to buy the fruits and also the ability to keep the fruit juice from going stale. A problem that would happen especially during the rainy season and the peak harvest season. 
On the advice of one of his professors, he applied for an agribusiness incubator program in Uganda and he was successful in his application. During this program, he was trained in juice processing and preservation, and so he learned how to preserve juices for up to six months. This meant that Sam was now able to buy more fruits at better prices during the peak harvest season and juice it and make a tidy profit during the other seasons. See, while he was making his juices at the university laboratory, <laughs> he ran into another problem. He ran afoul of some of the lecturers who did not like the fact that Sam was using the lab to establish a fruit drinks factory. They kicked him out. And he then implored his brother to give him one of the rooms in his house to use as a factory. When he started to get orders from supermarkets, and hotels for his juices, and he did not have the capital to fulfill the orders, he devised a pre-financing program for the customers to pay upfront a portion of the order, and then he would supply the order within a week, and then they would pay the balance. So these were some of the innovative ways that Sam got some startup capital for his business, utilizing his brother's real estate, utilizing pre-financing, and certainly also utilizing knowledge that he gained or he earned through the incubator program. Today, roughly 10 years after Uhuru Fruit Drink started in Sam's dormitory room as just a banana processing uh, uh, company, the company, which by the way is named Tersam Investments, is thriving. Its products were, have now been certified by the Uganda National Bureau of Standards and the company itself has earned the trust of an institutional investor, that's Growth Capital, which is providing the resources needed for Sam to achieve his vision of seeing his fruit drinks sold all across East Africa. Now, what can we learn from the journey of Sam Turiatunga? I'm going to point out three lessons that I believe can be learned. You may well have other lessons that you can glean from this story. Let me share my three. Lesson number one, start with what you have. Let me say it again. Start with what you have. Notice that Sam did not have any capital when he started his business, but he had energy and drive. So he used his energy and drive to find a company that made juices and became a sales agent for them. This was incredibly smart because Sam was able to build relationships with customers before he started to produce his own juices. This way, he understood what the customers valued and desired before he spent money creating a product or a service that, frankly, they may not want. Additionally, by doing this, he also earned himself some money that he could use for the initial investment. That's lesson number one. Start with what you have. Lesson number two. Not all investments have to be in cash. Sam recognized that the money he needed to grow his business was needed to purchase assets or products that the business needed. And he recognized that by being innovative in his approach, he could ask some people to provide those products or assets without giving him actual cash. For example, his brother provided a room. His professor provided free consulting advice on how to make juices. His university provided a lab and his incubator program provided knowledge and networks, and his customers provided pre-financing. All of these were extremely important for Uhuru fruit drinks to grow. You see, we can learn that when we are clear about what we need the growth capital for, then we may recognize that we can approach potential investors with the opportunity to provide the resources we want to buy, and they may be more willing to provide those resources in kind than they are to provide the cash. So remember, not all capital has to be provided in cash.
That's lesson number two. Lesson number three, invest in your own competence and capacity. See, when Sam was advised to sign up for his first incubator program, which, by the way, did not provide any cash capital, he didn't turn his nose up at it because the pro pro program did not promise to give him money into his business or to pour money into his business. He recognized that the, the value of knowledge and expertise was tremendously valuable to help him make his business grow. And he gladly accepted the training and knowledge to be able to extend the shelf life of his products. Sam attended more programs and has continued to invest in his capacity to make his products, to package his products, and to run his business. In fact, it is his capacity and demonstration of competence that made the institutional investor willing to make the investment into Uhuru Fruit Drinks. Imagine if Sam had refused to invest in his own knowledge and was still selling fruit juice in a disposable cup today. The institutional investor would never have looked his way. It is because he learned how to preserve his product, package his product, bottle his product, keep his product quality consistent, and even deliver the product to his customer that his company became a viable target for institutional investment. Again, three lessons to be learned. Number one, start with what you have. Number two, remember not all growth capital needs to be in cash. Number three, invest in your own competence and capacity. Now, you may have gleaned some other lessons from Sam Turiatunga's story. If you did, please share them on BCA Online. I'd love to read your comments and your feedback and what you have learned. We have now come to the end of our podcast today. I want to thank you for listening or watching. I hope you've learned something useful from today's podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and like the video. Tell your friends about it. Together, we can transform our beloved continent of Africa. See you next week. Tomorrow belongs to those people who prepare for it today. See you next week.